Okay, in this video, I had a thought. If I could make cranberry sauce wine in my preceding video, why not make applesauce wine in this video? So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make one gallon of applesauce wine. Hi, I'm Charles and welcome to DIY Fermentation, your site for doing fermentation on a shoestring budget. Now to make our applesauce wine, of course, we're gonna need applesauce. I'm gonna be using 70 ounces or 1.998 kilograms of applesauce. Two quarts or 1.89 liters of 100% apple juice with no preservatives. The juice of a quarter of a lemon. A quarter of a teaspoon of Red Star Cuvée wine yeast. Now, of course, again, if you don't have it, use whatever you got. I'm going to be using a third of a teaspoon of pectin enzyme. Now, of course, if you don't have it, don't worry about it. I'll be using a couple of straining bags. I'll need something to do primary fermentation in. Anything that has a wide mouth opening will do. We'll need something to do secondary fermentation in. Either a one gallon or four liter jug, jar, carboy, demijohn, take your pick, will do. An airlock with stopper. A hydrometer so that we can determine what our alcohol potential is going to be. Now, before I forget, we're gonna use up to or around two cups of sugar since this is unsweetened applesauce that I'm using in this recipe. And of course, using our sanitizer of choice, we're going to make sure that all of our equipment has been properly cleaned and sanitized before we start making this wine. And again, that is what I'm going to be using to make this wine. Now this part is pretty straightforward. We want to put the applesauce in the straining bag and the straining bag in the fermenter. Yeah, I can tell you now, it's going to be a little bit messy, but what can you do? Let's go ahead and tie off our straining bag. Get it in the fermenter. <laughs> okay, that's one. Okay, that takes care of the messy part. We can now go ahead and add in our apple juice. And put our cap back on for the moment. Now after re-sanitizing my spoon, I want to just go ahead and stir this up just a little bit, mashing down on some of the bags. And following that, I'm going to go ahead and add in our peptic enzyme. 
Trying to sprinkle it around as evenly as possible. And then put our cap back on. And wait for that to do its thing. Let's go ahead and cut our lemon wedge. And let's go ahead and squeeze that into the pot, into the fermenter. And let's give that a little stir. And put our cap back on for the time being. We're going to add some of our sugar. We're going to start with one cup, take a hydrometer reading, and see what, if any, adjustments need to be done. Let's go ahead and give that a good stir to incorporate. Okay, that was a good full minute of a vigorous stir. And now we can take a hydrometer reading. After adding that one cup of sugar, our hydrometer reading is reading at 1.070. And I think I'm going to leave it there. Normally I would like to go to 1.080, but because of the alcohol tolerance of the yeast we're using, I think I'm going to cut my losses with the alcohol and uh, I'm going to leave it at that. Now the Red Star Premier Cuvée wine yeast that we'll be using has an 18% alcohol tolerance, so it's going to be a little bit strong. If you prefer your wines not as strong, then you might want to use something else. Now to begin the process of turning our applesauce mixture into wine, we need to add yeast. And I always use a quarter of a teaspoon of yeast. That's always worked well for me. So just go ahead and sprinkle it evenly as possible, avoiding the straining bags. And go ahead and put our cover back on. And now, for the next three days, we want to go ahead and open that cover up and give our mixture a, a vigorous stir. And I should point out that this particular fermenter does come with its own built-in airlock. So that's why you're not seeing one sticking out of it, even though it does come with one. So after that three-day period, uh, we're going to go ahead and let this sit in, in, in this primary fermenter, probably for five days in total. Then we'll go ahead and remove the straining bags and transfer everything into the uh, secondary carboy. And begin the process of bulk aging. And that process will take several months. Now again, the follow-up steps, all of the subsequent rackings, the degassings, the bottling, the pasteurizations, all of that you can find in a playlist on my channel's, uh, channel's page under winemaking operations. Let's go ahead and label our creation. We are making applesauce wine. We started it on this date and our original gravity reading started in at 1.070. Now of course again this is not the end of the process this is just the beginning of <laughs> the end of the beginning process. There's still uh, still several more steps that will occur over the past over the next rather several months. One uh, we will rack this into secondary after after five days but during that first three days, once again, we want, to, we want to come back in and make sure we give it a good vigorous stir, mashing down on some of the bags for two reasons. One, to release a little bit more flavor from the applesauce, and two, to give the yeast a little bit more oxygen. But that's only during the first three days. Uh, for the remaining two days, we just want to pretty much leave it alone. And then after that, we're going to rack it into our secondary and begin the process of bulk aging. Now you can find all of these follow-up steps in my, on my channel's playlist page 
under winemaking operations where you'll find the rackings, the gassings, the pasteurizations, the bottlings, the, all of that you can find there. And then we'll see this wine again at the 12 month mark uh, when it's time for the 12 month tasting. Again, if you like what you see here, please click on the subscribe button. Let me know I'm appreciated. Better yet, become a member. Let me know that you appreciate the channel. And we'll see you in the next video. Okay, it's now been 12 months since we started making our applesauce wine out of applesauce. In this case, Granny Smith applesauce, which I didn't know they had. Glad they do, but well, it is now time to do a tasting. What we have here is wine that, of course, has already been bottled. It's been back Sweden. It's been pasteurized. Uh, so a little time, some time ago. Um, the wine, of course, if you can tell, <laughs> did not go clear. It's still opaque. We did not use any pectin enzymes, so this was kind of expected. No big deal there. Uh, beyond that, I mean, there's no sediment on the bottom, so it's not like totally being held in suspension. I think this is going to stay this way. All right, let's, uh, let's get right down to it, and let's find out if it was really worth the effort. Actually, it was a lot less effort because that applesauce being pureed the way it was, it kind of made it easy to extract the juice. But, okay, I forgot, came in in an ABV of, ABV, alcohol by volume, of 9.95%. So it's an easy drinking wine. Downing the bottle is not going to have that much effect, depending on how you can handle your alcohol. But, here we go. Really. You can really smell the Granny Smith apples in this one. Yep, and then you can smell the alcohol, which is really kind of surprising, only at 9.95%. But, let's see how it tastes. Tastes like a Granny Smith apple, quite honestly. <laughs> Normally when you're making an apple wine, you can taste the apples. Uh, that's, that's, it's a given, it's apple wine apples. Um, but with the Granny Smith apples being a much more tart apple, that tartness really comes through in this one. Yep, it's just like it's just like chopping down on a Granny Smith apple for sure. In fact, I'm trying to think of what adjustments that I can possibly make on this one because of the tartness of the apple. More than likely, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. More than likely, I would probably dispense with the uh, with the lemon juice entirely uh, since it doesn't really need that that additional. Um, uh, uh, acid blend kick to it. I think uh, the apples stand alone. Uh, that would be the only adjustment that I would make. Maybe back sweeten it just a little bit more <laughs> now that I know what I'm working with once it's been in the bottle for a while, but no. This actually tastes quite nice. This does actually taste quite nice. I mean, most apples, wines, and meat, by the way, this is just a plain mead that I've got uh, ready for bottling. It's already been pasteurized. It's just a question of just getting it into the bottles. But uh, no, um, if you're looking for an easier way to, I mean, if you don't have an apple press just lying around and you're kind of looking for an easy way to extract the apple juice, um, the applesauce, it's just nothing but uh, but uh, pureed apples, basically, uh, and the juice extraction was quite uh, is already done for you for the most part. Um, so yeah, if if I had to make uh, another apple wine and all I see lying around is applesauce, 
I would seriously give that some serious thought as opposed to just buying a, a, a bushel full of apples and just, you know, trying to chop them down as fine as I can, throw them in a food processor, throw them in a blender, trying to get the same effect that you would get with applesauce. Uh, but as an experiment, this one worked. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this one actually worked. Can't wait to try the uh, cranberry sauce wine that I made. But again, uh, here we go. Yep, applesauce wine, 12 months later. Uh, I've got, what, three, four more bottles left. I'd like to try this again at 15, maybe two years later. Uh, to see if it mellows it out just a bit. But beyond that, yeah, one adjustment. Get rid of any apple, um, apple <laughs> get rid of any lemon juice which was acting as our acid blend substitute. And uh, this will be fine on its own. If you're using just regular applesauce, uh, not necessarily Granny Smith applesauce, then you might want to leave the lemon juice in, but for Granny Smith, no, <laughs> you're good to go. So again, if you like what you see here, please click on that subscribe and uh, notify buttons, become a member, become a Patreon, help support this channel. And until then, I'll see you in the next video.